Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to be showing you how to install Casa OS. This is a software that you can install on Linux that is a starting point for any personal home network or cloud server solution. This will be mainly showing you how to install it on Debian 12 and I'll be going through the process of installing Debian as well as installing Casa OS and the walkthrough of the App Store. The App Store is one of the main features of this software since it makes it really easy to use for any beginner. So go ahead and follow along, and I hope you enjoy the video. The first step will be to install Linux on our computer. You can either use a Raspberry Pi, a secondary computer, or a dedicated server to do this project. On the GitHub for Casa OS, you'll see recommended OSs such as Debian 12, Ubuntu Server, and Raspberry Pi OS. I'll be using Debian 12 for this demo. You can go to the website and download the ISO, as well as you will need Rufus to get the ISO onto a USB drive and make it bootable. So go ahead and download Rufus as well, and make sure you have a USB drive that has at least 4GB of free space. Before opening Rufus, make sure that you already have a USB drive plugged in. If the USB drive has any data on it, make sure you back up the data before using Rufus, as making the USB drive bootable will wipe the USB drive. Once you have the ISO downloaded, go ahead and launch Rufus and make sure the USB drive is selected. Then open the ISO file and leave all other settings to default. Once everything is ready, go ahead and click start. And make sure, if you get this pop-up, make sure you select write in ISO image mode. This will make sure that it boots properly. And then if you get this, make sure you click yes. This process will take a couple minutes. Once it's done, go ahead and click close and close the application and then eject the USB drive from your computer. Now plug it into the computer that we'll be using for our server. Here in the BIOS of our laptop, make sure you go to boot device priority and select the USB drive as first. This process will look different based on the laptop or computer you're using, so make sure you consult your owner manual. Once it's done, go ahead and hit yes, and then the USB drive should boot. I recommend selecting graphical install as it makes it easier to follow through. For the rest of the setup, just follow the directions on screen. When you get to this point when it asks for networking, make sure you have a Ethernet port that is detected. I highly recommend using Ethernet and not Wi-Fi as it will make our server perform better. Once you have Ethernet plugged in and ready to go, follow the steps on screen to set it up. Once you get to this point when it asks for partitioning disks, I recommend using the entire disk. This will make sure that our server has the most storage. I'll be using a 1TB hard drive for this project. Here you will see your USB and hard drive, make sure you select the hard drive and then all files in one partition. Then go ahead and hit continue and then confirm yes to write changes to disks. Once it's done installing, you'll be rebooted automatically and you'll be seen with this screen. Here, enter the password we set earlier and log into your account.
If the system asks to connect to Wi-Fi, make sure you skip. We'll be using Ethernet instead. You'll know whether Ethernet is detected based on the icon in the top right corner with the Ethernet symbol. Once it says all done, we're ready to start installing Casa OS. To get the one line install script, we can go to the GitHub and copy the command from here. If you scroll down past the features tab, you can find the command. Go ahead and copy and then open the terminal and now we can run the command. If you get this issue where the user is not in the sudo file, follow the steps on screen to fix that. This is common as when you first install a Debian system, your default user is not in the sudo file, unlike Ubuntu. This issue is only found on Debian. Go ahead and copy the commands on screen and run them, and then once you're done, you will have to reboot the system, and you should be good to go after that. After rebooting, we can go ahead and run the command again. Once you run it, you'll see this screen where it says Casa OS and an automated running script. This will install all the necessary things that we need. Once it's done installing, you'll see this screen and the local IP address of your device. You can open this link in the browser on the server and you'll be met with the Casa OS landing page. Here we can go ahead and create our account, the admin account, and this will allow us to access it based on the account on other devices on our local network. So go ahead and set your username and password. This doesn't have to be the same as the Linux device. Once it's done, you'll see a files app and an app store for now. You can also see the storage manager to see the number of disks that we have. As you can see, our one terabyte disk is showing up on the left and you can see the CPU and RAM status. And here in the file manager, you can go to the folders and find your files here. If you go to the root folder, you can actually see the entire file manager of the Linux device instead of just the Casa OS files. Here, this is the home folder, and now you can see my OBS recordings that I'm making right now. Now that we have Casa OS installed, we can access it from other devices as well as install apps, which I'll be showing next. Here, I'm back on my Windows PC at the same IP address that we visited before. We can log in with the same credentials that we just created and the app store and files are already here. As you can see, we can view the same files that were available on the other system. Downloads will be relatively quick as it is all over your local area network. This will all be based on the connection speed between the computer and your router and your Wi-Fi speed between the Windows device or any other device that you're downloading from. This speed will not be limited by your internet connection speed, such as your ISP.
And now for the next part, one of the key features of Casa OS is installing applications. To do this, you can go to the dashboard and select the app store and find any apps here that you want to install. This is what makes self-hosting so simple and Casa OS just makes it a really good starting point. For example, you can even install Nextcloud, but for right now I'm going to be showing you Photo Prism. This is essentially a photo browser, just like Google Photos, but now it's self-hosted on your own server. For example, this is a Sony RAW image, and it has built-in support for converting RAW into previews. This app is very useful if you have a huge photo library, but you don't have cloud storage for it. The next demo, I'm going to be showing you how to install Nextcloud. You can just go to the App Store and click Install, and everything is automated. If you had seen my previous video of installing Nextcloud, you could see that it is quite a tedious process of setting up things manually, but Casa OS does everything automatically. Now you can see the Nextcloud icon there. Right after installing it, you might get this error since the server is still starting up in the background. If you have a lower end server that you're running this on, you can always turn off other apps before starting another one. Here you can change the settings of Nextcloud and change the amount of memory that it uses. For example, I can click on Photo Prism and then click the power button to shut down the app. This will free up more memory on our server. Once it's ready, you can click open, and as you can see, this is the normal setup screen that we see on the other Nextcloud setup. You can follow the steps on screen to set it up if you like. Once you set it up, you'll be greeted with a familiar screen if you had watched my other Nextcloud video. From here, you can follow the same steps that you used in the other video to set up uh, access outside of your local network. Here you have a full file manager and you could even download the Nextcloud desktop apps and sync. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and you can always go back to the Costa OS app store and find more applications to download. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below.